Welcome to Mini Stories, where we'll be listening to Reddit stories. Story 1. Am I the mistress? I, 25 female, matched with Cody, 33 male, months ago on Tinder and we haven't stopped talking ever since. We haven't met yet, but he's been working hard to visit me in my country, at least according to him. I am seven hours ahead of his time, so I understand that we cannot talk all day, but I noticed that there has been a pattern with the time that he could only talk to me. At first, I thought it's maybe his work or his active lifestyle. We have been sexting, sending each other's nude photos, even videos, and we share each other's bedroom fantasies. What we'll do with each other once we met and how are we going to have our time together? These past few days has been different, he would go a day without texting me and will just say hi or hello my love, and when I replied, he's gone again. Just yesterday, I stumbled upon an article that features his name and I did some stalking. One page led me to another, then to a Facebook account of a woman with the same last name as his and a cover photo of them during their wedding. I found out that he got married two months before we matched on Tinder and maybe he's with her those times that he could no longer reply to my messages. He texted me today, and to be honest I am deeply hurt of what I found out, but I couldn't confront him. As foolish as it may sound, I love Cody. Am I considered a mistress in this situation? Should I tell his wife about this? Or should I just disappear without saying a word? And now for the comments. 1. 100% the mistress. He's only been married two months before he starts cheating why get married? Block and move on. I'd consider telling his poor wife. She deserves better. 2. Just walk away. You are in love with the fantasy that he sold you. The same one he sold to his poor wife. If you do choose to send proof to his wife, just be aware that people shoot the messenger. Story 2. Am I the asshole for hating that my ex is living with my parents? At the start of this year, I, 29 female, was stalked and harassed by a woman who believed that I was having an affair with her husband. It was over a month of daily harassment over phone, on social media, and at times even in public. She even threw a stone through my window and vandalized my car in my driveway. She was caught on security camera and charges were brought against her. I had to spend a lot on lawyers to threaten legal suits against both the husband and wife to get her to back off. She was having some sort of a mental breakdown and went into a psych hold. Her meds helped and she agreed to stop and accepted that I wasn't the involved party. As part of our legal agreement she made social media posts apologizing and clearing my name and some financial recompense for damages caused. During all this, my fiancé, 32 male, was of no help at all. We lived together and he wouldn't do anything to support me. When I got accosted in public places, he'd simply leave. When our condo was attacked, he got in his car and left to stay with a friend. He said it was too embarrassing for him to stay around. He didn't seem to realize that I was scared and felt my life was in danger. He knew that I was innocent in this, and yet he didn't stop his friends and family from believing the worst about me and making snide comments at me. I begged him to help me and he'd act frustrated as if there was nothing he could do here. When the woman harassing me made the apology posts, I forwarded them everywhere explaining how I got caught up in someone else's tragedy and I called my fiancé a coward for his behavior. Which was also my way of publicly breaking up with him. My parents were very supportive of me throughout this mess and they gave me money for the lawyer's retainer. But they didn't like my public FU to my ex. They said that it was petty of me and asked me to be nicer and not break up. I did eventually remove his name from my posts, but I was not interested in any relationship with him anymore. After this all went away I was still pretty traumatized and paranoid. I quit my job and I couldn't stand living with my ex. 
My best friend lived a few states away and she invited me to stay with her as a change of scenery. It was the break I needed. I also found a great job there while I was visiting and decided to settle there. I've been living in this town since then. I have booked tickets to visit my family for Christmas and last night my mother told me that my ex is staying with them as a house guest. My mother said he wasn't doing too well after I left and my parents let him move in with them. I don't want to see my ex and I am pretty hurt that my parents are taking care of this man who did not stand by me. Would I be the asshole if I tell my parents I am not visiting as long as he's in their home? Now for an update, am I the asshole deleted my previous post because of mention of violence? But there was no violence in there. I had mentioned harassment and vandalism but no violence happened. I had logged in to update and can't do it on am I the asshole so we'll write down here for people who've been messaging me. I didn't go home for Christmas. I called my parents and told them I wasn't coming and that set off a lot of recrimination and arguing. My mom getting upset at me for my coldness and my dad reprimanding me for breaking mom's heart. Mom is trying to get me back together with ex. Dad goes along with whatever mom wants to do. I asked them why they'd want me to be with someone who didn't protect me and mom said if the stalker was a man he'd have protected me, but it was just a woman, a lady from a good home, so there wasn't any real danger. This was news to me because when it was happening both were worried about my safety but now they are downplaying it. This is the exact argument X had used and they are buying into his story. Then mom goes into how this was embarrassing for X and says I wronged him by putting him in this situation. This brought up a long history of mom's disappointment in me. I was never what she wanted me to be. I know she loves me and had thought our differences were the typical mother-daughter conflict that everyone has. But my mom has fears that run deeper than that. She is a slim, svelte and pretty woman who is very particular about manners and appearances. I got my build from my dad's side of the family and I am very curvy with large breasts. My weight and my figure has been a cause for concern for my mom who'd pressure me to cover up and downplay it. She wanted me to go into teaching or medicine, but I didn't do well enough in school for that. I ended up forming a career in sales and I am very good at it. I was making good money at a large corporation and while I dress modestly, I was no longer wearing baggy clothes, but professional suits with a good fit. The fact that I look like I do and that I do, sales, was scandalous to my mother. The guy whose affair brought problems in my life is a manager in the same company I used to work for. We worked on the same floor in different departments. I think he let me take the fall because knowing who he was having the affair with would have put his job in jeopardy and would have been a lot more scandalous. My mother thinks the wife putting the blame on me was inevitable because I have the look. She thinks her fears about my appearance and career had come true in this incident. She is horrified that instead of learning from my mistakes, I now have a job that is client relationship manager, even though it is at a financial firm. She feels pressured to force me to come home and get married and leave my career behind. I am so sad about how all this has turned out. My relationship ended and now I am losing my parents. Meanwhile, that cheating man and his psycho wife are still married and he still has the same job. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, like, comment, share and subscribe.